What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV, and today we're gonna to tell you exactly why you do not need the all new 23 Super Duty, specifically the F350 single rear wheel. In this video, we're going to go over the differences between a 250 and a 350 single rear wheel, but we're also going to give you a comprehensive look into towing, basically going over the 2023 Super Duty trailer towing guide. So with that being said, let's jump into a couple of different things you need to know about the new 350 single rear wheel. Well, and this one also happens to do with the F250, but a lot of people might be using this vehicle with a four wheel down situation. Some people call it flat towing, and because the F250 and F350 come available with a four wheel drive system, you can actually flat tow this behind an RV. You gotta do a couple of different steps to make that work, but it is possible. Keep in mind, different trailer towing packages come with different options included in them automatically. Pause that screen if you wanna see what specific option you're looking for and see if it's included in the Super Duty that you want. Before we jump into those differences between the 250 and the 350 single rear wheel, I need to let you know some of the terminology so that way we're all on the same page. Let's talk about the different hitches that you have available. The first one is going to be the weight carrying hitch. Those are typically for small and medium sized trailers. And really at the end of the day, all of the weight of the trailer, not all of the weight, but the weight of the trailer tongue actually sits on top of that tongue weight or on the actual hitch itself. But if you go with the weight distribution hitch, that actually distributes all of the weight to all of the towing vehicle wheels and the trailer wheels as well. So basically it evenly distributes the weight of what would have been on the tongue or on that trailer hitch. It evenly distributes it amongst the vehicle and the trailer itself. Next up, let's talk about fifth wheel. This is a hitch that's mounted in the bed of the vehicle, and because it's located on top of or maybe slightly in front of the axle itself, you have the ability to carry a little bit more weight. But the big boy, the gooseneck, that is going to be that hitch ball that you see in the bed of the truck. The reason, or the way that I remember the difference between a fifth wheel and a gooseneck is going to be the gooseneck looks like you have a big long gooseneck that's going into the bed of the truck versus a fifth wheel is just a big old hitch mounted in the bed itself. But anyways, the gooseneck is nice because it does have a tighter turning radius. And if you go with something like the B&W hitch, uh, it is actually going to be hidden. And, you know, because it can tow more weight, it to me, that's probably going to be the best for most people, unless you're going to be doing something like uh, pulling an RV that requires that fifth wheel. Before we jump into how to actually identify what the towing capability is of every single vehicle, whether it's a super cab, a regular cab, or super crew, um, let's do this. Let's jump over to Colton Love, and he can tell us the difference, you know, visually speaking, between the F-250 and the F-350 single rear wheel. All right, guys, so we're out here with an F-250 and an F-350, and what we're about to do is point out a few key similarities and a few key differences. Are the beds different? Nope. Is the interior different? Nope. Is the badging different? Yep. Are the mirrors different? Nope. Are the cabs different? Nope. Are the frames different? Nope. Are the springs different? Yep. So we're actually back over here with the F-250 and I just wanted to, to mention a few things here. Again, this thing can tow almost exactly what the F-350 can tow. And all you gotta do is set it up the right way. And at tccustoms.com, we have all of your, your towing needs between drop hitches, goosenecks, airbags, anything you need to get this thing to tow, whatever you need it to in a comfortable way. Does anybody else have that song stuck in their head? Well, I can't sing it because yeah, I don't want to get demonetized, but anyway, so let's jump into how you can identify what the towing capability of your said Super Duty or F-350, whatever, even an F-150. Basically, the first thing you need to do is go find the Ford trailer towing guide and make sure that it's for that specific year model. We're talking about 23. Good news is that trailer tow guide is already out. First thing you wanna do is go down to the level of uh, towing that you're looking for. So find that bumper pull or the conventional or find the fifth wheel or gooseneck, whatever you wanna look for. Then once you've identified what vehicle overall and what type of towing you're doing, then you need to find out exactly how that vehicle is equipped. So for instance, uh, you need to identify first whether it's a regular cab, a super cab, or a super crew. Then you need to identify the length of the bed of the vehicle, what some people call it box length. Um, most popular setup is going to be a six and three quarter box on an F-250 and F-350 single rear wheel. 
And I would also argue that four-wheel drive is vastly going to be more popular than the two-wheel drive since the two-wheel drive is really only available on the base trim level. So uh, once you've got those selected, then you're going to narrow it down to the engine specifically and then the gear ratio of the vehicle. And a lot of this information is going to be found in that VIN sticker in the door jam of the vehicle if you don't know where to find that information. Now that you know how to find the different capacities, it's important to know the different terminologies around those capacities. First thing, let's talk about the gross vehicle weight. That is just simply going to be the base curb weight of the vehicle plus the cargo and plus passengers. Basically, the entire weight of the vehicle is what it boils down to. Next up, let's talk about the GVWR, which stands for the Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. This is the maximum allowable weight of the fully loaded vehicle, including the passengers and the cargo. Basically, the, the truck, the cargo, everything in the vehicle, this is what it can max out at. Meaning that if you're going to go on a vacation, you need to load up all your stuff into the vehicle, take it to the cat scale and weigh it. And as long as you're under that gross vehicle weight rating, you're good to go. Now, the next thing you need to know is the GAW. This is the gross axle weight. And this is the total weight that is going to be placed on each axle front and rear. And coincidentally, there's also a gross axle weight rating, which is basically the maximum amount of weight that can be carried by a single axle front and rear. These next few things, I'm going to blow through them pretty quick to respect your time, but if you want detailed information about them, pause the screen, you can read the description. The base curb weight is the weight of the vehicle, including the full tank of fuel and standard equipment. It doesn't include the passenger's cargo or optional equipment. Cargo weight, this is the weight that's gonna be added to the base curb weight of the vehicle, including the cargo and optional equipment. When towing, trailer tongue weight, just keep that in mind, that is going to be a part of that cargo weight. The payload is going to be the combined max allowable weight of the cargo and the passengers that the vehicle can carry. It is going to be the gross vehicle weight rating minus the base curb weight. GCWR, this is the gross combined weight rating. This is a big one because this is the maximum allowable weight of the towing vehicle and the loaded trailer, including all of the cargo and the passengers. Basically, if you're gonna to be towing a vehicle, you gotta make sure that your overall rig, everything included, is under that GCWR. Now, there are going to be a lot of different stipulations on that, so I'm going to leave those on the screen. Feel free to pause because at the end of the day, don't listen to some YouTuber for your towing advice. Hopefully this will help you, but this is not the end all be all. Make sure you do your own research before making a decision to tow that extra heavy trailer. The last thing I wanna talk about before we jump into the specifics between the 250 and 350 single rear wheel are going to be some basic towing information. There's a lot to cover there, but for a lot of you guys, it's rudimentary, so I'm not going to go over all of this with you. Pause the screen if you're interested in learning more about that. So let's jump into the conventional towing. If you're gonna be doing a lot of conventional towing with your Super Duty F350 single rear wheel, you probably wanna consider stepping down into the 250 because there's only a 2,000 pound weight capacity difference between those two. The F250 tows 22,000 pounds. Keep in mind, this is with the 6.7 liter high output V8 turbo diesel, also known as the Power Stroke. Uh, <laughs> and it has a 31,000 gross combined weight rating on the truck, trailer, the whole rig. The F-350 tows 24,000 pounds, so 22 versus 24, and that's with the same 6.7, and, and that gross combined weight rating is going to be 35,200 pounds. Now, why I want to point that out is 2,000 pounds sounds like it's a lot of weight until you realize we're talking 22,000 pounds. At that point, you got to worry about the crosswinds when you're driving. I mean, if you've got a big old trailer and it looks like a parachute riding down the road, I would be more worried about the stability of the vehicle, the width, AKA a dually, uh, than I would be, you know, versus 2000 pounds. You know what, let's just move on into the next part and that's gonna be the max tongue weight for conventional towing. The 2023 Super Duty F350 single rear wheel has a max towing weight for conventional towing of 2,500 pounds. Compared that to the F250, it's only 2,200 pounds. So 300 pound difference between those two. A big part of that is gonna be the difference in springs that Colton showed you guys earlier. If you're gonna be doing a lot of fifth wheel towing, you might want to consider the 350 single rear wheel if you're gonna be doing some heavy capacities because there's a 5,400 pound difference between those two. The 250 does 20,500 pounds. The F350 does 25,900, hence the 4,500 
Do dollar. <laughs> a 5,400 pound difference between those two fifth wheel towing capabilities. And by the way, that's gonna be the same difference on a gooseneck. The gooseneck towing actually is 5,400 pounds difference as well. The 250 does 21,600 pounds. The F350 does 27,000 pounds. Now what's crazy is that the new Super Duty can do 40,000 pounds worth of gooseneck towing. Now, keep in mind, that's with an F450. It's going to be a dually. It's going to be a two-wheel drive, and it's going to be a regular cab. But the fact that we have a consumer-grade truck that can tow that much is absolutely ridiculous. Now, let's talk about the difference in those gross combined weight ratings. There's 4,200 pounds difference between the two. The F250 does 31,000 pounds. F350 does 35,200. So looking at those differences, if you're one of those people that lives life on the edge when it comes to towing, you might want to consider the Super Duty F350 single rear wheel. But once again, I believe that if you're going to be towing that much weight, you might want to consider a dually to make yourself a little bit wider on the road. You get more stability, especially if you get those crosswinds. And the other thing that I want to say is that if you're going to be buying a Super Duty and you're not going to be towing that often, those extra heavy springs are going to make for a terrible ride when the truck is not loaded down. So if you do a lot of city driving or a lot of interstate driving and not a whole lot of towing or payload in the vehicle, you really might want to consider doing a Super Duty or maybe even an F-150, depending on what you're actually going to be using the vehicle for. Can I tell you how many people say, I need a Super Duty, and they're only going to be towing seven or 8,000 pounds, and the F-150 can crush that towing capability. I guess what I'm saying at the end of the day is make your decision wisely because there can be some money differences and also availability differences. Not nearly as many 350 single rear wheels are floating around like there are Super Duties. Well, actually, right now there's hardly any F-250s around either. So you might want to just consider all of the different options before you make that decision. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. And I also want to remind you, we are giving a Bronco away. So check out tccustoms.com. Every time you purchase merchandise, you get automatic extra entries into that giveaway. So check that out. Link down below and have a great day. Peace.